a number of wisdoms in some beautiful verses. One of them is the, uh, the chief of all the verses in the Quran. Now this verse is the greatest in the Quran because it describes the Creator, Allah, our Lord, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. It is Ayatul Kursi, the ayah of the footstool, the verse of the footstool. And with it, there are other verses, the ones that come after it as well, where there is great wisdom that really sheds a lot of light on our lives as Muslims, as believers who follow the truth. And it tells us more about our Creator, more about the way He helps us, and more about how we should go about spreading our religion and living by it. Now, we will start with reciting the verses, insha'Allah. Then after that, I will read the translation and we will see the wisdoms and try to benefit from them as usual. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnakum أنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي يوم من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لانفصام لها والله سميع عليم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون ألم تر إلى الذي حاج إبراهيم في ربه ألم تر إلى الذي حاج إبراهيم في ربه أن آتاه الله الملك إذ قال إبراهيم ربي الذي يحيي ويميت قال أنا أحيي وأميت قال إبراهيم فإن الله يأتي بالشمس من المشرق فأت بها من المغرب فبهت الذي كفر والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back. So these verses 
are among the most important in the Muslim life, in the life of every Muslim, because they contain a lot of wisdom. I will read, inshallah, the translation of their meanings, but I will remind you first that it is impossible, it is by all means impossible to translate the Qur'an, but what we can do is try to translate some of the meanings because the meanings in the Qur'an are very intense and very deep and it would need volumes to try to translate the meanings of them. But what we try to do is to get the most important meaning, the most prominent meaning and within this translation that we, are, we have chosen, we will try to see what really describes or conveys the message that we are trying to deal with or the wisdom that we are really trying to deal with. Allah says, O believers, spend out of what we have provided for you before the arrival of the day when there will be no bargaining, there will be no friendship and there will be no intercession. And on that day, the disbelievers are the wrongdoers. Then Allah talks about Himself. He says, God, Allah, there is no deity but Him. He is the living. He is the self-subsisting. No slumber, no sleep overtakes him. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Who can intercede with him except with his permission? He knows what is before them and what is behind them. And they encompass nothing of his knowledge except what he permits them to, to have. His throne extends over the heavens and the earth. And he never feels fatigue in preserving, meaning the heavens and the earth. He is the most high, he is the greatest. Let there be no compulsion in religion. The guidance, the true guidance has, has, has been made clear and clearly distinct from error. Therefore, whoever renounces false deities and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the strongest handhold, the unfailing handhold. God is, or Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Allah is the guardian, Allah is the helper of the believers. He brings them to light, He brings them out of darkness into the light. But as for the disbelievers, their guardians and their helpers is Satan and his legions. They lead them from the light in the, into the darkness. And these will be the dwellers of the hellfires that will dwell there forever. Now these verses contain a lot of wisdom. First Allah tells us about the reality of this life, about the re reality of wealth. Allah says, spend of what we have given you. So wealth is from Allah. He gave it to us in the first place. So we have to spend so that we free ourselves, we say, save ourselves before the arrival of a day when there will be no recompense, no bargaining, recompense with wealth. It will only be the, the righteous deeds. Then Allah talks about Himself, that He is Allah. He is the living, the ever living. He needs no support, but He supports all the creation. He gives life to the creation. Taking care of the universe, of the heavens and the earth, does not cause him to fatigue, does not cause him to be tired. No slumber, no sleep overtakes him because he is above all these things. Now if we grasp this wisdom, it will tell us the reality of our Lord and of our deficiency and weakness. So Allah, to him belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. Everything belongs to Allah. He has control over everything. And the control that some creatures have, some people have, is deficient and has its own limitations. But Allah has real possession of everything in the world. No one can intercede with Him except with His permission. Imagine the greatness of the Lord of everything. Allah, that's our Lord. That's the one that we live for. That's the one that we turn our hearts to in worship. He's the one that we live for. That's our life. This is the most important wisdom. Then Allah talks about Himself, that fatigue does not overtake Him. And He is the most high. He is the greatest. Now, if we happen to learn this, then we have learned the most important wisdom in this world. We have understood the reality of this life. Then Allah gives the Muslims who have achieved the meaning of this verse a very important instruction.
He says, there will be no compulsion in religion. We should not force people to enter into Islam. We do not force people to become Muslims. Islam is a matter of choice and conviction. You choose it as your own way of life. Why there should be no compulsion in religion? Allah says, because the truth has become or has been made clear. The guidance has become clear. Everyone can tell this is right and this is wrong. Islam has become clear. And this is the obligation of Muslims to make the guidance of Islam clear so the people are not misguided. Then we cannot force the people to become Muslims. People choose to follow, to follow the truth. So that at the end, on the day of judgment, everyone will face the consequences of his or her own actions. This is what Islam stands for. Then Allah says those who follow the right guidance, then they have grasped the strongest handhold. They have held on to the rope of Allah. As Allah says about the Quran, or the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says about the Quran, it is a rope. One end is with Allah and the other end is with you. So if you hold on to it, then you will be strong and you will be firm. This is why the Muslims who have understood the reality of their creator and of their life, they are strong in faith. They have conviction. They have an unwavering belief, unshaking belief. They are strong. They go about in this life very strong and very determined to follow the truth. So this is the state of the Muslims the, because Allah guides them, takes them out, out from the darkness and into the light, into the light of paradise, the light of the guidance of the Quran, the light of understanding this life and understanding the reality of their existence. Whereas the disbelievers, their helpers, Allah says their helpers, their friends, their guardians, is Satan and his people and his helpers. So what will happen? The, the Satan will guide them from the light into the darkness, the light that was given to them as they were newly born as Muslims who understand the reality and the, of their existence, the wisdom behind their existence. But Satan blurs their vision, takes them from the light and brings them into the darkness, the darkness of the heart, darkness of the soul, darkness of the life. They live in darkness because they don't understand what they are living for. They're trying to make a purpose, make a sense out of their lives. But the believers, have Allah to guide them to the real light, the light of the Qur'an. This is the light of Islam that we should live by. So from now on, inshallah, once we read the Qur'an, we'll try to see the light, the wisdom that is in the Qur'an. Try to have it, try to gain it, try to understand it, try to benefit from it, and then live by this light. So we can really see things with a very clear vision. Uh, very, we, then we will have developed the right attitude because we have the most precise vision about things, the most correct understanding about things because we see things in the light of the Qur'an, the light Allah gave us. Now these number of verses, these few verses contain a lot of wisdom. The first thing, the reality of this life, that it's a fleeting desire, a fleeting life that it will go and it will end one day. It's not the real life. So we should spend and give more, help others so that Allah can really save us on the day of judgment from the hellfire. Then our knowledge of Allah will give us the right attitude in life and the strength of belief and faith and the strength of character that the Muslims should have. Then Allah tells us no compulsion in religion. It's a matter of choice and conviction. Then Allah gives us the, the gift of that he guides us from the darkness into the light. We want to live in this light, take it from the Quran. Until we meet next time, inshallah, we'll have another wisdom that we'll try to benefit from. I leave you in peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, pardon us by the Excited.